Hi, Claudia here from Create with Claudia. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make this really unique, and I think really beautiful, batik lace table runner using water soluble stabilizer. Um, it's a really fun technique. It's a little magic in it. Um, and it's a great way to use up scraps. I use batiks um, in this project. This one's about 48 inches by 12 inches wide. Um, I use batiks because I just love the saturated colors. I use a lot of batiks in my work. Um, and also, another reason is because it really doesn't have a front and a back. I mean, if you look close enough, you can tell the back of a batik, but it's kind of hard. Um, and this way you can flip the table runner over. Um, but anyway, this is how you do it. It is lacy, you can sort of see through it. You can see my fingers coming up through it. Um, and you can put it on wooden tables. It looks really pretty on different colored tablecloths. The different colors you use as a background uh, really uh, bring out different colors. So let's get started. Okay, you're gonna need some supplies. You're gonna need, of course, batik scraps, which I always have a lot of. Any size will do. I do like smaller ones because I like that sort of mosaic look. <clears throat> Excuse me, allergy season. All different colors, of course, you could do this all in one color wave. I have one later I'll show you how to do, um, and that'll be my example. But you need lots and lots of scraps. You're gonna need water-soluble stabilizer that comes on a roll like this. This one is 12 inches wide, and I think it's about nine yards. Um, and again, my table runner is 48 inches long, but you can use any size you want. You can cut out the circles out of it. Um, you'll see in a minute how you can use different sizes. Okay, you're gonna need lots of pins, lots and lots of pins. You're gonna need a bowl of water for later, and that's where the magic comes in, and you'll see that. You're gonna need a towel, because it does get wet, and you're gonna need good scissors. And here we go. All right, so I've already cut these out, but you're gonna cut out the size you desire of two pieces of the water-soluble stabilizer. I'm just doing a small one here for demonstration purchase purposes. Um, again, the runner is 48, so you would cut a 48 inch long piece of the stabilizer. Um, if you wanted, you didn't wanna do rectangles, it might be hard to see on the camera because of the gray background. This is a rectangle, you could cut out circles, a heart, uh, whatever you wanna do, but I'm gonna do this for today. And then you're gonna just start playing with the fabric. You're gonna start taking your scraps. These are, you can see, any shape and size. Again, you could use all squares. It's completely up to you. Um, if you've ever watched my other videos, I really do like projects where you can just sort of uh, do whatever you want and, and not follow a real specific pattern. I like patterns too, but sometimes it's just fun to go crazy. So you're gonna start and you wanna keep it inside the, the stabilizer. And you're just going to start laying your fabric the way you like it. And you want to overlap them because you don't want real big gaps in the, in the table runner. And you're going to try. You don't want to go to outside. I mean, you can, but it's, uh, you don't try not to go outside of the border of the uh, stabilizer. And you're just going to start putting them however you like. Sometimes with bigger pieces, this goes quicker, but I, I really do love that uh, mosaic look. And it shows off all the fabrics I've used in years past in projects. Um, that's why I never throw out my scraps unless they're really teeny tiny, but honestly, you could use really small ones in this too. You could even use trimmings. I've always wanted to do that. I haven't had a chance to try that yet, but. So you're gonna keep covering until You've got that whole piece of the stabilizer covered. And see how I overlap? There's some gaps, there's not a whole lot. You don't want too big a gap because then it gets really, the thread, it, it gets a little, um, it's a delicate piece anyway, but it, it's a little bit more fragile that way. Let's see. All right, last one, last but not least. So there you go. Um, I'd probably play with that a little bit, but that gives you the idea of what you do. So that's on the, the the, the, soluble, the water soluble stabilizers on the bottom. And then you're gonna make a sandwich. You're gonna slip another piece on top so that the fabric's in between. And you're gonna pin these two layers, to, these three layers, excuse me, together. And this is a little tricky. You gotta watch. I'd like to start from one side and work my way over while I'm sort of flattening it. But I'll show you how I, how I do that. You're gonna start top left and I try to pin as much 
as many pieces of fabric as I can. So I got like that sort of blue striped one and I got the green one. You need lots of pins for this. I will tell you that right now. Um, and some are hard if you, especially if you're going through a couple layers. See how you're just sort of pinning down the side and I'll just go do the one side for you. Don't do this on a really fancy wooden table that you're gonna worry about scratching with the needle. Um, I just use this plastic table, it's perfect for this. The fabric will shift while you're pinning. You've probably already seen that because with your hands and moving things around and everything. Just lift up the fabric, push it back in. Um, if you find that maybe you didn't, you wanted an extra piece, it's easy to lift up the top layer of the, the stabilizer and uh, move the fabric around however you want. Um, all right, that's enough. I'll just you get the idea. Anyway, I would cover the whole thing and pretty heavily with the pins. And I've already done that. And this is one that's all in one color wave. I love these colors. This is in greens, purples, and blues. And you can see it's nice and neatly uh, pinned all the way across. And then we're ready to sew. And you're gonna use any kind of thread you want. I'm using white today, so it sort of, sort of pops a little bit for you. Um, on the table runner that I showed you earlier, I used purple. It's really pretty with different colors. Um, so anyway, let's get started with the sewing. You're going to basically put your piece in the machine. I start at, you can start anywhere you want and just start sewing lines across. All You want to make sure you do crisscrosses, all kinds of things, and I'll get started on that in a minute. You can do curly cues, again, whatever you want. Um, it's up to you, but you want to pretty heavily quilt uh, sew it so that um, all the fabric gets caught. The one thing of warning here is there are a lot of pins, and I have broken needles doing this. Just watch those needles. And don't pull out the pins right away. You want to make sure you don't pull them out till um, you have enough stitching in each piece of fabric. And you'll see that as I go along. So here we go. I'm just starting in the middle. You can start wherever you want. And you got to watch those needle heads. You might have to pull some out. The first few uh, times you sew over, uh, it does take a little while because you gotta watch the, um, once you start getting rid of the needle, it, it, it's not nearly as, as long. Straight lines, wavy lines, whatever your heart desires. It does get caught sometimes on the needles, just give it a little tug, not a big deal. And, and then I don't even take it out, I just put my needle down and I pivot it, and then I decide, well, maybe I'll just sew down this way. Okay. I try to do crisscrosses to really get all that fabric covered. couple more rows for you just so you know. You really do want to heavily stitch this um, because you're going to miss little corners. Oops. Let's see, maybe I'll do one down the middle. And again, watch the needles and you may have to give it a little tug. Sometimes the fabric will gather, it's okay, it will get ironed out. Um, this is a very forgiving project, which is, a, and that's another reason I like it, I love forgiving projects. Okay, so I would do a lot more stitching, but I'm just gonna show you. Um, anyway, I, you can sort of see how I've done. It's just all different ways, all different straight lines, and by the end of this, I would have this really heavily sewn, and all the needles would be out, the pins would be out, and here's one I can show you now. Here's one that's done, um, and you can see crisscrosses. Every piece of fabric is covered. 
um, front and back. And then I'm starting, I'm ready to do the magic. And this is really the fun part. You're gonna get your bowl of water, and again, follow the manufacturer's instructions. And you're going to gently get your towel ready, and don't wear clothes you don't mind getting wet, and wear clothes you don't mind getting wet, and you're gonna put it in the water. And this is really cool. It just, after a few seconds, starts disappearing. You can see that, that stabilizer, that water soluble stable, stabilizer, excuse me, disappears. And you're gonna sort of rinse it a few times. You can still sort of feel it's a little sticky, so you wanna rinse it out. Sometimes I change out the water, especially on the bigger pieces. This is a small piece, so I'm not gonna do that. Sort of gently, very gently, sort of agitated a little bit. And again, very gently just sort of wring it out. I can still feel a little stickiness. Let me see, soak it in there. About 30, 40 seconds, maybe a minute. Again, this is a small piece. Um, bigger piece probably take a little bit longer because the water you can see sort of gets a little fo um, foggy. Okay, I think that feels good. Okay, so you're gonna move that water out, wring it out, wring it out very gently, and then you're gonna lay it out. You want to press it down. You can see you want to cut off eventually. I wouldn't do it right now. Wait till it's all dry. Uh, lay it out. Pat it dry. I lay it on a towel to dry. You can see how you can see that coral background. It pop, different colors pop on that. I might even flip it over. Like I said, later you're going to want to go back and trim off all those excess threads. There's the front, and then maybe flip it over you can see the back and I would set that aside to dry I will iron it once when it's uh, damp maybe a little bit drier than this just to get some of those really um, bad wrinkles out um, and then I will uh, iron it later again when it's dry it irons really easily um, it is so much fun to do um, I made like I said I made this table runner I showed you earlier um, but my husband was joking that I could almost wear that as a, a scarf, and I really think you could if you made it longer. What a pretty scarf that would be, a real lacy batik scarf. Um, and it is just, I, like I said uh, probably a million times in this video, this is uh, really one of my favorite projects. And it was something I wrote a few years ago and finally got around to doing the video. I hope you enjoy doing it as much as I do, and I really appreciate you watching today. Thanks so much. Bye.